This here is a snake run. It basically shows a couple different things. One is the side slope capabilities, what you feel right now. And in, in, in any circumstance where the, where the tires would not be gripping, we, would, we make slide. And it's always a good thing to remember, always turn into the way you're sliding. So if we were to slide down the hill, I would obviously want to turn right. The other thing here as well, as you can see in the situation where we're at right now, what do I need to do? I need to use that brake throttle modulation technique. Even though we're level, the suspension being the fact that it's a four wheel independent suspension, some have are compressed, the other ones are fully extended. Another reason why you would use it. Anybody have any questions? Oh, it's amazing. Enjoying, enjoying the ride? So people will often ask, uh, can we use BTM when we're climbing hill? And that's what we're going to show you right here. We have some little uh, offset moguls here. We'll actually climb up this with two tires having traction. So I use a little bit of brake throttle modulation when we climb right up. And then on the way down, what's nice about this vehicle is by using engine compression, we don't have to use our brakes to go down the hill. You can see that we're actually being held back with engine compression. Uh, no, BTM. no BTM on the way down. With this ground clearance as well, we can also climb up to 16 inches of logs or any type of any type of log, any, anything, whether it be a concrete obstacle, any obstruction that's up to 16 inches in height, we're able to climb right over those. Obviously with it being dry, we have good traction, but when it's wet, obviously it can pose some challenges, which is why sometimes you will need to use brake throttle modulation. We use this facility 365 days a year. We have the ability to use it 365 days a year. And the beauty of being in Northern Indiana we do have some hot summers, but we also have some bone chilling winters as well. Next is a fording pit, and I'll open this up to you if you would like to drive through 30 inches of water. Uh, we will. If not, and the only reason I say give you the option, the water will come into the cab a little bit, which means if you want to drive through it, that's fine. You just have to pick your feet up off the ground. Okay. So if you guys want to do this, we can do it. I pack this person. Is that a yes? You're ready. Just be keep in mind that the water may come in the side of the door. So if you have any purses or anything like that, any, any attire close to the door, like a jacket or a suit, just kind of pull it up and make sure it's not there. So all vehicles can actually go through a fording pit or a fording depth of 30 inches. With an optional kit, we can actually go through 60 inches, which is actually five feet, which comes up to here. Which is the marine version. Which is the marine version, yes, because it's obviously amphibious landings and things like that. Uh, what this will actually do is basically, the entire systems, whether it be differentials, transfer cases, transmissions, geared hubs, are completely sealed, which means no oil can get out, so it's environmentally friendly, and also no water can get in and destroy items internally with the transmission or anything like that. So everything is completely sealed. So as we're going through this, just keep in mind that the water will come in. This is actually 30 inches to show you exactly what 30 inches is like. See the water did come in a little bit and at this moment I'm just going to stop here and let it drain out a little bit. While I'm doing that I'm just going to shift back into high range. The reason for that is we're actually going to take you on some uh, on the straightaway and show you a little bit of the facility.